Now we don't often have mass production jobs, so when we do, I love to squeeze every last drop of efficiency I can out of them. This sheet is part of a repeat job we have really optimized to hell. Last delivery, we only lost eight parts out of over 1,000. Those are numbers I like. We tend to do more one-off jobs and things that are like R&D or prototyping, but we definitely aren't averse to these either. I haven't much talked about lean in these videos, but we do subscribe to the Toyota concepts of efficiency and happiness that are largely laid out in the book, The Toyota Way. I can credit our business being in an okay financial position right now as the world is in a crazy place because of Toyota and lean style habits, like only buying what you need and keeping cash on hand rather than stuck in that inventory you just bought that you don't need. Before understanding the Toyota way or lean, I would frequently buy something like thousands of boxes for a product that we were selling a decent amount of but it seemed like a better deal at the time and let me tell you i am still stocking boxes in my attic at my house because i overbought them four years ago and that's just stupid money that's now in my attic i'm really glad i learned some of these lessons before i jumped into the cnc world because boxes are only about a dollar a piece but plywood sheets are 50 to $120 a piece. And if you think you're going to need something, but you don't, that's a pretty expensive mistake. Pandemics have this funny way of making you rethink some of your practices. And only now has just-in-time procurement and production bit me when the world supply line screeched to a halt. I want to dig into how we use these ideas in a dedicated video, but I'll highlight some of the thoughts we use in trying to optimize this job. The majority of what I'm thinking about while trying to optimize this kind of job is waste. Toyota showed us there are seven types of waste. Defects, overproduction, waiting, transportation, inventory, motion, extra processing. And someone, I forget who, later added an eighth, wasted talent. Now each of these could be discussed for an entire video, but I think we'd lose some interest. So I'm just going to go over some of these and how I use them to think about how we improve our jobs. Hit on defects earlier, but there's really no reason for defects in this job. You keep your tools sharp, tweak the cam if there's issues, and you should be good to go, right? Well, there are keys to getting to less than 1% defects, and good cam is largely to credit. Most of our defects come down to breaking loose of the vacuum table fixturing. If we think about the order needed to make sure that all parts make it to the end without damage, we need to start with the smallest parts near the outside edge of the stock and work our way up in size and into the center of the sheet where the vacuum holds the best. You can catch this here in the time lapse where we start with the thin parts on the lower left and then we hit the big parts on the right, jump to the middle and then go to the back left for the long parts and finally the larger but shorter parts in the back right. Motion can relate to many things. The most common is human motion. I'm constantly calculating this in my head. Can I save myself three steps by moving that stack of scrap? You can also think about motion and machine movement. Is it jumping around or tool changing when it doesn't need to? These things add up. Here you can see I start at the far end of the bed and work my way out. I bring the blue cart as close to me as I can and stack parts up on the bed as to not put every single part on the cart individually. This saves me energy and time. I find these kinds of efficiency calculations both rewarding and something like solving a Sudoku in my head as to not think about the rote, repetitive job that I have to do. Oh, and don't forget a stopwatch. I love to shave even 15 seconds off a sheet swap. It just makes me happy to have a goal and beat it. Have you ever picked up a sheet of plywood from off the ground by yourself? It's not fun. Try that 30 times a day. When I saw these blue tilting shop carts, I thought that is a huge solution for us. So when I found one locally, I had to buy it. Uh, so I can literally slide the new sheet of plywood from straight off this cart that lifts up vertically after it's tilted, it locks in place, and it slides straight onto the CNC without any effort. Back and time saved. Back to this job, we always bring new sheets on from the easiest side of the CNC bed into the already popped up pins. We insert those with a macro at the end of our G-code to save us from walking over to the control and hitting the button. I don't really know what to call this in terms of a categorical waste, but we're literally moving waste off the CNC in the most efficient way possible. We figured out that if you use a couple paddles and just scoop it off, you'll not fill up your dust collector or your vacuum. And it also gets the dust off the fastest way. We just put it in the trash directly. So after you can just vacuum the sheet clean and you're ready to go with the next. 
So I was saying new sheets from the right and cut parts always come off from the most direct way and you try not to cross those paths. This saves motion, but also leads into our next waste reduction. Transportation, or how are you moving things? Did you move something to get it off the CNC, but then have to move it again to use your workbench? Face palm. I didn't have any pallets ready, but in reality, these parts that didn't need post-processing should go straight to the pallets and not to our bench. Why move them twice? You wouldn't have FedEx ship unfinished parts to a storage locker across town to then have them ship it back to finish those, would you? Think about the cost of moving things, even when there isn't an actual cost. Another thought about transportation is how you are moving things. Are you carrying two sticks of lumber from the front to the back of your shop because all your carts are busy? That's not ideal. You're wasting your time and energy with all that extra movement. That's enough lean. How about a little Q&A? All right, let's do a little Q&A. So as you know, last week I kind of screwed this up and didn't save the Instagram questions. So I saved them this time. We didn't get quite as many, but there are some good ones. So let's get into that. First question I saw was from Colin Klimish. Um, do you use Fusion Cam templates for 2D and 2.5D work? Um, we aren't really proficient. I've, I've been a little lagging on setting up Fusion templates, but if you don't know, go check out Cam templates. I'll try to find a link for this, um, but you can save a template. So say you always cut Baltic birch plywood and you always do a 2D cutout with a quarter inch compression tool and you always like at the same speed, well, you don't have to make them from scratch every time. You can save them, right click on your cam that you want, you select the different operations, save those and uh, put a name to it. Like we have one called BB, which is Baltic Birch, has a decent amount of the normal things we always do. They have the normal settings, kind of our standard tools. And that makes it really easy to kind of whip out uh, a bunch of new operations. And as John Saunders always says, put in more than you need and then delete out the ones you don't because it's way easier to delete than to go find the one that you can't find somewhere. All right, so we got a bunch more. I got another high PDX CNC with a shy smiley face. Hi, oop soup. I, I get so many highs, I, I don't know. It seems like spam to me, but what do you know? Uh, my friend Mike said, what is the CNC? And he's just a troll, so I'm not gonna reply to him. Although I just did. Did he, did he get me? Uh, CG Haley said, when, do you, when you did maintenance on your CNC, did you use any solvent for grease cleanup? Um, we resisted this for a really long time because it just seemed wrong. It seemed like you'd be getting into, salt, into gaskets and seals with that kind of solvent. Um, what Shop Saber, the maker of our machine, suggests is to use WD-40. Um, we started doing that a couple times ago because we had some buildup on our y-axis bearings um, and it did work pretty well and it is pretty mild so i did use some wd-40 on a blue towel to wipe down all the rails and it does a pretty dang good job of cleaning up some of that junk you really can't get off i know people that have these machines that wipe down their whole machine with wd-40 i won't say i haven't tried it we don't try we don't do it a lot we use it very sparingly always on the rag not on directly on the machine. But yeah, it works and ShopSaver suggests it. So I check here on machine uh, specs, but if you have this kind of machine, go for it. Kunj Patel 2 says, best way to stop chipping or breaking while cutting solid wood. I assume you mean breaking the wood while cutting. I'd say there's a lot of ways that could go wrong. Wood has pretty strong directionality and certain woods, white oak, uh, birch, just literally birch solid wood. Both are pretty bad about tear out at the end of a cut, depending on which way you're turning around. So the simple answer is slow way down. Uh, that sucks. There are tools that are made for it, chip breakers in, in particular. I think I just put one away. All right, I found it. So a chip breaker has little flutes uh, little little gouges in the flutes to break up the chips as they go through. It, it makes the heat uh, decrease because they're not being pushed around as much, not as much friction. This is the way to go if you're trying to cut through um, hardwoods. This is what I just did all those, those plugs with. It went through all of them. It wasn't even new and it's still super sharp, but 
I would say that's a testament to Vortex's geometry. Uh, this is the 14, Vortex 1455. I don't know if it's gonna focus, but they're not cheap, but man, do they last and man, are they really good. In comparison, if you can tell, this will focus. This is the 1265. It's a longer extended version, same half inch uh, diameter, but no chip breaker. They're both good. This is definitely better. And to go even further than that, you can get a roughing tool like that three quarter tool I've been uh, teasing and we're actually gonna use here shortly that has an even more serrated edge and that further breaks up the, the fibers so that they don't tear. And, and you have to come out and clean that up with like the 1265 that's a clean edge, a finishing tool. Use an upcut tool, slow way down, like wait, like we go roughly 160 inches a minute when we rough hardwoods. Whereas we cut, we finish at like 300 maybe, 280. And cutting plywood, we're in 400 to 600 with a compression cutter. So it's a lot slower. Cam Pyle says, with your shop saver, what inches per minute are you using for lead in and lead outs and ramps? So there's a kind of a simple rule of thumb that I understand with this kind of thing. Whatever your feed rate is, say it's 400 uh, for normal cutting, do half of that for the lead in. Um, lead outs doesn't necessarily matter as much if you're drilling, you don't really wanna go too crazy, not too much over your normal feed rate or your plunge rate. But with lead ins, with ramp outs, lead outs, you can go faster. Because usually on the way we set up cam, it retracts, it doesn't lead out in a diagonal like, you, like we ramp down and in. Um, but honestly, you can get pretty close to, if you use good tools, you can get pretty close to your feed rate with a, with a lead in. I don't always go half the speed, but that's a good starting place. I think that's all I got. So short Q&A this time, but if you wanna get in on the Q&A in the future, follow us on Instagram. I post them usually midweek, a story with a request for questions. I try my best to answer them here. So far I haven't been stumped or maybe I just haven't read those, who knows. But I'm happy to try to help if I can. So Instagram, uh, PDXCNC is our, our handle. I'll put a link below too. All right, thanks. One last bit, our base fixture is finally ready and I can't wait to test it out. And this little guy in the back is about a year and a half in the works. Chris just got our new Arduino vacuum gauge working and I got to play around with it for a bit. It still has a few bugs, but it should be a really awesome tool for understanding how much vacuum we are pulling on the CNC bed. More to come on this. And one more thing, I just put some free CNC clamp fixtures on our website. They're easy to make on any size CNC and are fully fusion parametric. Cheers.